Right. So, uh, hello everyone again. It's uh, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, intro introducing myself. Uh, it's a pleasure to be there on EuroPython uh, 23. Unfortunately, I can't. Cannot, I cannot really see and meet meet some of you uh, as this time as uh, as, as uh, this time uh, I'm online. But thanks. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, and uh, hope you will enjoy. Enjoy. So let's start from from the plan of, plan of the presentation. So today we'll talk about uh, like five points. Um, so uh, we'll start uh, from benefits from zero downtime deployments. Uh, I will present you a few strategies how to achieve it. I will go through best practices. I will also try to highlight uh, the challenges. Uh, related to uh, zero downtime, downtime deployments, and and in the end, I will uh, try to answer the question or or help you answer the question: uh, Is it actually uh, worth the effort? Right. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm Rafał Nowicki. Uh, so. Uh, as, uh, as you heard, I, I enjoy web development. Uh, I'm uh, mostly like full stack web, uh, web web developer. So even though my uh, last couple of years uh, of experience is front end uh, front end based uh, related to uh, uh, to the JavaScript um, and the React, um, uh, I decided recently to to go back to some topics related to uh, to DevOps. Uh, as like for the first time, uh, I started DevOps work at 2015 when when Kubernetes was were just uh, crawling and uh, everyone was on the fame of microservices. So I, I was also uh, writing um, some some of them, uh, and the only one choice was uh, was the cloud uh, infrastructure provider, which, which was the, the AWS. So no one no one really um, think about using other other. Cloud provi providers, or there were like really m m minorities. So for uh, in the meantime, I also found the Upgrid online startup uh, that uh, that helps small and mid-sized companies processing their uh, like daily uh, custom orders, and it goes with pair with the sale and the settlements. So basically, this says that it's like software uh, for business. We run it on for now only in Poland, uh, but but like if you're if you're interested, just just just, just give me a, a shot. Uh, and uh, I'm also like contributor to the Ulan Labs uh, software company. Uh, this is the house full full of fintech and blockchain experts. So here we provide the the complete complete solutions. Um, for the web development, including uh, the audits, uh, product design, and custom uh, software de development. So it's like really, really nice team. Uh, I recommend it, recommend it to you. So let's start from, from the benefits. So what are really the benefits of uh, zero downtime uh, deployments? So many of you uh, already hear, hear about that, many of you already Use the application uh, that uh, are really are, are deployed uh, in like fluency, fluently. Uh, so first thing that comes to our mind is definitely 100% application uptime. So this is especially dedicated by some specific industries uh, like uh, fintech, uh, banking. So the industries where where the, where the customer interest matters. Uh, when the end users really matters. So for example, as a user of exchange platform, so I, I don't want to really miss the opportunity to sell or buy uh, in some uh, critical market uh, situation, right? Also the social medias, uh, emails, office tools. So everywhere, uh, every like uh, every tools, so we, we use it, uh, so 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 often that 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 it needs to be on, and we cannot really uh, stop our work uh, because of we we have some uh, like schedule for um, like our office tools. It needs to be like 
upgraded. Okay, so in desktop application, it's it quite recently uh, like also happened uh, that you go to work and 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 you need to wait for for installing the software. But but uh, this is n not the future where, where we want to live. So probably like the Facebook or, or Google products uh, won't be that popular if they uh, would uh, show some like prompts. Oh, the system is unavailable. And please try again later, right? Um, this also builds trust in the relationship with with our customers, right? The end users. So especially when a number of users grows, uh, chance that that no one is using our application in release window go down, go um, down, right? Uh, so if if you're like small small company, uh, you don't have many many customers, you can always uh, uh, deploy in the uh, after the office hours, right? But uh, but if you have number of, number of users, it's uh, a bit harder to uh, to schedule. Uh, so what if your deployment process is complicated and long, and you would benefit from doing that uh, deployment under the hood? So uh, I think this is a good question. The system efficiency improved. I mean, is that uh, like very often uh, zero downline deployment? It's not uh, everything, and application uh, are built in the uh, mindset uh, of lean software uh, development um, uh, choose. So not only to deliver as fast as, as possible, uh, but also monit to monitor to measure. Uh, and uh, quite important to decide on, on that data, right? So how would you do that if you don't have that? So overall benefit is that uh, complete system efficiency got improved, and this is this this is what what, what we are aiming also with these zero downtime deployments. So let's talk about a few strategies. Um, so. I will uh, elaborate on three of them uh, that, that, that I think it's, uh, it's the most popular, um, at least what I, um, in what I um, faced. So starting with uh, blue-green deployments. Uh, so this strategy involves maintaining two identical production environments. So the blue, uh, the one on the, on the left side, and the green, the one on, on, on the uh, right side. And uh, in between, like our user traffic and uh, and and application, there is always some kind of load balancer. So this is uh, like always something that 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 manage our traffic. And uh, at the beginning, once we have version one of the product, it's using some set of servers, some some stack. Um, and uh, like. The, the new version is deployed to, to the green deployment, to the green environment, and, and, and tested uh, uh, through uh, through this. So once it's uh, like stable, once we decide that it's stable, or like our automation tools decide that, uh, traffic is routed from the blue to the green. So now you can see that um, that the traffic is uh, is on the new version. Uh, making the green environment the new live version. Uh, if any issue arise, like after after that, uh, so if uh, our deployment don't fail during during the, uh, the, the 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 build, if it won't fail on our like checks um, or maybe even some manual tests, um, then uh, it it can always fail fail, fail later, right? So. Um, we should have some uh, kind of uh, tools that will allow allow us to switch back to the uh, to the blue environment quickly. So blue green deployment is also known as the red black, and uh, maybe I should be more like uh, talking about the red black, which because this this, this new term is like uh, used quite maybe not I don't know if, if like quite recently, but uh, it was introduced uh, like by Netflix, if I recall correctly. And it's also uh, described on the Kubernetes uh, documentation, uh, but it's 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 all all the same. So we just just uh, uh, the name, right? Um, another strategy is the rolling deployments. So this involves like granularly updating the application instances or services in some sequential manner. 
So here you can see like four states of the application. So uh, again, uh, blue is uh, is our live application, and the green is something that we want to to upgrade. So we are upgrading like granularly, service by service, uh, and uh, instead of like deploying the new version to all all of the servers, uh, it's rolled to some like subset of the servers. Uh, so the the previous servers is remaining uh, to serve uh, the live version. Uh, I hope that you can see at this point uh, some difficulties there. Um, I will talk about them uh, in a, in a moment. So this this approach ensures that portion of the application remains available. Uh, throughout the deployment process, and by this uh, we de redu reduce the risk of the of the of the downtime, or we eliminate it. Another one uh, that is maybe not that popular, uh, but it's quite quite easy to, to easy to implement, and uh, mm, and I've seen it in 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 number of applications that that I was working on, uh, is that hot patching. And uh, this one in involves applying patches or updates to the running application without restarting it, right? So um, imagine like like you could just fix the bug without really uh, like go through the whole deployment process. In uh, in bigger companies, it's uh, sometimes uh, like procedure procedures that are that involves many people and involves many. Um, like many many small tasks that to be done. So imagine if if uh, instead of rolling back the new version, uh, you could easily uh, patch it. And uh, um, an example might be just uh, when you have a JavaScript uh, application uh, on a ser served on a, on a tree, you can uh, easily swap uh, the the bundle and uh, and almost Im immediately allow to uh, to get that so hot patching like enables updates to be applied uh, while still application remains live and accessible to users right so this also is done in a uh, in a matter that uh, that no one really recognize uh, that the change has made let's go through some Best practices now, so uh, it's not actually the best practices of the like imp like implementation details about the um, about the zero downtime deployment because this this uh, presentation is more 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 from the high high level. Um, so we will talk about like a set of practices that make zero downtime deployments make more sense when they are applied together. Um, and like honestly, it's it's like almost always go uh, together, uh, at least some of the, some of it. So uh, starting from the canary releases. So sometimes they talk that this is a mm, this is like actually the st strategy. I put it like here more in uh, uh, in in the practices se section. So what is actually the canary release? So this is something that involves like deploying new feature or update to a small small subset of users. Uh, yeah, and I think this is quite critical why it may be noticed as a strategy. So uh, it makes deploying new features to updating to small subset of users or servers before rolling them out to the uh, entire user base. So. Yeah, you might already see or maybe hear about uh, um, about similar um, experiments made by uh, Facebook, for for example, right? So you have different UI, you have different um, different application than your friend and and that who is who is in your uh, in, in in the same room. So by like granularly increasing and exposing. Um, um, Sorry, by like granularly increasing um, uh, the the text. Uh, uh, how 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 say that? So like the, the developers can can monitor new version uh, new version behavior, collect feedback, and detect any issues before a full full uh, deployment. So we can like if we focus on that uh, 
the small subset of users is is our um, is is like group of our customers that are actually testing our application. So they are actually testing our our application because maybe we 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 just uh, uh, they they voluntarily uh, accepted to get beta like features. Uh, they are on the same uh, stack uh, that is mm, like like where where you deploy the changes first. So for for example, in Upgrade we have something like like this. Uh, it's like multi-tenant application, and we have uh, like uh, kind of isolated tenancy, um, and we have the whole the whole stack uh, where uh, where there is a customer that 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 knows that that is like very like uh, first like like ad ad adopter of of the application and 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 gets the most the updates more frequently. So once this uh, works. So once uh, the application works not only on the level of uh, like like CI C C D jobs uh, like manual tests and so on, we have green light that based on our our best knowledge, it's um, it's working fine. Uh, product can be released. So we first release it with with, with some su some small subset of the users, and then like after a few days of testing, like monitoring. Like uh, like tracking uh, the user behavior, we decide on uh, deploy to uh, to bigger range to other uh, customers. Um, so Canary releases are also uh, yeah considered as 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 the uh, zero downtime uh, strategies. So as I said, it's like more 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 implementation like detail uh, for me. Um, another one, another practice is that like using feature flags. Um, so, so also like the feature flags. I think that that deployment process is is is, is also like very close to the deploy the development process. Um, so there is also uh, there is some like uh, relation between how would you how do you manage the version of the application um, and uh, feature toggles or feature flags. This is this is something that 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 uh, um, that helps us to. Uh, that allows us to 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 to, to run specific features uh, or, uh, or 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 hide specific features while deploying new code. So this is something that you uh, like make the the end users don't see uh, the the deployment results from the beginning, uh, but but you can just go to the admin panel and and turn on the feature later. So this. Uh, like help you, for example, to uh, to merge and to like partially deploy uh, not complete features, maybe uh, like MV MVP features uh, or um, or maybe not yeah not 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 finished one, right? So you can constantly working on it, and once it's ready, you can turn it on. Or you can again turn it on for some, some specific group of users, right? Uh, so this this provides uh, granular control over the feature releases and allows for easy rollbacks if necessary, right? So it's uh, it's primarily used to review, so A/B testing. Um, review of the effectiveness um, of a change and how the market reacts on the change. Uh, so this can be connected with canary releases or, of, or future flags for better experience. And uh, data like gathered there can be important drivers on how application is deployed. So uh, this is something that I observe more in e-commerce sectors. So it's like like they very often care about how the um, sale process should should look like, like how fast you should buy the product and how efficient you should do that. Uh, and in this case, the small like improvements, like like, like checking different interfaces. I know the, the companies that is saying that uh, I can you can buy item in like three clicks. 
uh, like with the payments, right? I can uh, I can buy the product with like like four clicks. So it's it's something that 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 allows you uh, like there are some um, researchers that 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 showed that uh, like if the process of buying an item is long, then you think okay, it's it's not something that that I really want to want to do. It's not so this boots this uh, book this uh, like computer is not worth the effort. I I will find another. Uh, shop where I can buy it. Um, yeah, so so this this is this is like uh, like most often used in the uh, sectors where where we really care about like like performance of our user. So implementing automation test processes and utilizing utilizing uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines are also crucial for. Uh, for the successful of their downtime deployments. So you probably want to be sure as soon as possible that the new version uh, is ready for deploy, that the new version is uh, like stable. So you won't ach achieve it uh, by just manual testing and uh, making uh, regression tests with, with manual regression tests with all of the changes. So like, you need to automate the building. You need to automate the testing. You need to like automate deployment of, of the application. Uh, by this, you actually reduce the, the risk of the human error, uh, and and allows uh, rapid um, and reliable deployments. So that's 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 our our goal there. Um, and monitoring was also something that I mentioned a couple of times um, during this presentation. And uh, it's still essential to have uh, uh, to have like monitoring systems in place uh, during the deployments. So real time monitoring like help, help detect anomalies, performance issues, or errors promptly. Uh, in case of the problem, rollback strategies should be uh, prepared to revert uh, to the previous version qu qu quickly and minimize the impact on the user. And uh, yeah, and this is like the monitoring is very important while the depo deployment itself, but it's also um, important after all uh, when uh, when deployment is done and maybe you're just turning on on the fe feature flag or uh, yeah or or you or you're making or you or you're providing different um, view to to some set of users like with the A/B testing. So. Um, Basically, the zero downtime uh, deployments, it's not something that you really get for, for free. And there is uh, also like some downtime, the downsides and, and costs, obviously. So since you decide, uh, um, you will always need to take care and ensure to prevent problems that may occur. So uh, yeah, in the development, uh, like creating new software, the biggest problem is always maintenance of the of the code. So in this this time um, this time with the zero downtime deployments, you have a bit more to maintenance and take care. So it's it's kind of um, loan that you make make for yourself. Uh, yeah. So first thing is that uh, the orchestration actually. So the container orchestration platforms like Kubernetes provides features for zero downtime deployments. Not only the Kubernetes, but but maybe more specifically uh, the tools built on, on, on top of it. And these platforms allows you to define deployment strategies and perform rolling updates, call scaling, and health checks. So by leveraging the container orchestration cap capabilities, uh, you can deploy new versions while maintaining service availability. So uh, in addition, you can automate, uh, like automatically handle failures or rollbacks. So depends on the teams, uh, many, many new projects starts with Kubernetes. Uh, but uh, if you're don't, uh, yeah, questions, questions why. Um, 
Yeah, so keep in mind that the biggest problem uh, with the with the custom solutions is 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 the maintenance and and the scale, right? So if the scale grow grow up, so you 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 need to be to be prepared for it. That's why the DevOps work and the, the whole architecture application architecture work is is quite difficult because we usually start from small things, small set of requirements, and then it grows and it grows in a way that 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 that, that you would you, that you would never predict that. So it's it's always good to to start from them uh, from from the, from the fresh fresh mind. Another big problem, and maybe it's even the biggest problem, that makes that like like that 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 loan on 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 our on on our team, is that the database schema changes. Uh, because these can be significant, like 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 challenge, uh, and uh, like actually for for this topic, there there could be like dedicated different like like completely separate separate presentation. And uh, what I've seen, there were even one of of that for the zero zero data migration is uh, in SaaS applications uh, today. Uh, so I can, um, I encourage you to, to to take a look at this, but just like quickly going through uh, the possible strategies that you, you can achieve uh, is that like performing the backward compatible data database changes, like using uh, database migration tools, um, or like providing some kind of like, like database sharding and 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 replication. So. Um, so basically, the, the, the biggest problem with the migration um, is still that uh, your end users like cannot really uh, you, you cannot really uh, stop like prevent them from using uh, the um, uh, the certain table once you decide to rename it or or move some of the data. So so that's why on every deployment. Uh, your code needs to be your code, and uh, like uh, your your database needs to be prepared. So actually, like like nothing uh, nothing like affects using uh, the the database. Um, the re the re real challenge is also team attitudes. So when you choose a team that already builds system like this, and you build product project fr fr from from scratch, so we are quite of like on the winning position. But migrating existing system without making uh, like cutting edge decisions, like highlighting the cutting edge decisions, very often rewriting some set of the application from the from the from the scratch on, or or the whole application, uh, can make me uh, migration that never uh, as a never ending story. And, and I, I'm a, I'm the witness witness of um, of many attempts of migrating to cloud, like uh, migrating uh, like micro like to microservices. Um, and uh, like, like optimizing the deployment process, and like we, without really like, uh, I've seen I've seen I've seen it work only once. Uh, once we um, when the case was uh, co like completely re rewriting the, um, uh, the the couple couple of the services, so it's really hard to rewrite the base of the application, right? And uh, fortunately, in uh, uh, Ulan Labs, there are like great teams. Uh, that 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 managed to um, uh, to like set up new projects uh, with 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 uh, with everything that is that that that, that could be needed for zero downtime deployments. So the question is, is it worth the effort? So I can see that um, we are a bit getting um, out of the time. I will try to to finish in next uh, like like three to four minutes. So uh, obviously there is no simple answer to that question. Or, or obviously, it uh, it's, uh, sounds. It depends. So it depends on many factors that are specific to your product um, or company. So, uh, like what your product does, who are your customers, how valuable is is, is for my company to, to have zero downtime deployments? How often do you need to deploy? Right. So they're like very like correlated questions that you need to ask uh, to to yourself, to, like to your company. Um, like all of the like challenges have a price uh, you need to, to pay to pay right so start from investigation if it's actually something that 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 you benefit 
So if you start or rewrite the application infrastructure anyway, so if you're in that point that you might building new foundations anyway, uh, just like try Kubernetes technologies, like like something 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 that that, that, that would would help you to start uh, like like to achieve zero downtime deployments if it's needed really. So uh, yeah, so let's so let, let's let's quickly recap um, on what we discussed today. So we went through strategies. Uh, so there are like three main strategies: blue green deployments, which is about deploying uh, like second uh, identical production environment, and then we, we were swapping the, the traffic. Then uh, rolling deployments, where we deploy services in sequential manner. Hot patching was about deploying challenges that don't need to require re, 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 that not don't need need, uh, need the service to be restarted, right? Um, best practices. So we went through canal releases. So this is releasing uh, changes to the subset of user, right? So yeah, feature flags uh, like that, the feature toggles uh, uh, with no deployment needed. So you can deploy and later you can turn on the feature, the flag. A-B testing is for better product deployment decisions making. Mm. CA automation tests to speed up the process and reduce the human error. So this is this is really like critical, as well as monitoring, which is for safe rollbacks and as well for A-B testing and, and better decision making. So is it worth the effort? And the answer is hard and not very clear. Uh, so like just just like you would need to go through that question that I give you. Do you really need that? Maybe like you can just automate a lot of stuff already and um, and th this this will be will be satisfying for you and you don't need to care about migrations for example and uh, like like 20 seconds 30 seconds of of of, of deployment uh, like uh, outage is, is is fine for your users um, like the advice is that small start start small um, because there are like there are plenty best practices in that area uh, that can be followed uh, to build better products and mindset as well. So you, you don't need to, to do everything now, you know, go to your products and, and say, oh, we are implementing ZDD now. Uh, we are getting rid of our infrastructure, rewriting it, because in, in, in most of the companies, it would take years, right? Uh, unless, unless you do something really small. So th thank you, everyone. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, there's time for question. You can uh, find me on like Noviral um, username, or you can use this uh, uh, query code to find me on LinkedIn. Um, and that's that's it for today. Thanks a lot. Waiting for the questions. Thank you, Rafal. So as always, we have the microphones. If anybody has, we have like 10 minutes of questions, so that's plenty, I guess. Uh, if anybody has uh, any questions on Discord online, you can put them in the chat and uh, I'll spell them out for you. Does it seem I that I was pretty clear, clear this time? Okay, so go, sorry, go, go on, go on. So I have a question. Uh, there is a pattern in when you want to do zero downtime, which is to always have a version a superior version which is uh, backward compatible with the previous one. Uh, you mentioned about uh, database migrations. When you do this on the database level, is it enough to prevent um, any issues on production or is it too simple or and in real cases, in real production use cases, it's always more complicated than this? Mm, so you're you're asking if if if, if like uh, uh, having that pattern uh, with uh, major, minor, and patch versi versioning, uh, right? Do you want uh, me to rephrase? Yeah, yeah, just just just, just if okay. you could short shorten the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so about database migrations, you mentioned it was um, something hard to achieve with the, with mm -hmm. zero downtime. My question is, if you ensure that each release is backward compatible. That your schemas are always backward compatible with the previous one. Is it something that you do first? Yes. Yeah, so, 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 so this is something like, like, like without. Uh, so, some releases don't, I don't actually need to, 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 to like to touch the database, and it's fine. So sometimes, like, like you provide new feature, and uh, and uh, and like ideally is that once you want to deploy new feature, 
your that new database structure, new database schema is already there. So this 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 is this this is the best like 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 approach because like uh, during the deployment we don't actually deploy uh, everything in one. So you, you don't uh, like uh, migrate the schema, make the database migration maybe, and also change the code. Right. So so this is this is something that 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 that, that you don't do. You usually do that like especially if you use for example Django with with that code to migration like 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 it's it's, it's quite um, you know close. Um, so uh, you need to like change a bit a bit like the the, the way of thinking uh, to uh, to like always write the. So it's not only about uh, you know writing the migration that. That will just uh, if you remove the field, uh, it will just create the field. But it's more it's more more about like uh, if you if you cre create a new field, uh, you need to like like uh, that the, the current version version of application cannot use that, uh, uh, that, that 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 new field that you want to migrate. Um, you need to like 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 make that make that jump. So so first you 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 create that field and then in another deployment you you you, you use it. The same for 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 removing uh, removing the fields, renaming. Uh, actually, renaming the table is 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 is, is almost something not not uh, uh, not something wor worth to do. So you, you need to, to have some some way of uh, of don't don't using the. Uh, uh, the, the structure from from this deployment, you just you just need to 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 have the database structure from the previous one, and then and then just uh, like deploy the features on top of it. Thank you. Thanks, Vlad. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. I also have a to, actually I have two questions. Uh, one is related. I, I'm actually uh, one is kind of similar to the question that you, you just answered. But so you mentioned about the best practices and the feature flags and. My question is about uh, data uh, data migration. Uh, so basically, he said that you know you can use the feature flags and roll back the changes that you just you know deployed. And I wonder about the, the best practices when you actually have to migrate. I mean, you have to proceed migration of the database via the feature flags. And then if you want to roll back this feature, so what's the strategy for that? So again, uh, like feature flags is something that you turn it on after the deployment. Which means that at least so 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 in this case when 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 you when you use the feature flags you could actually uh, deploy the new feature with the with with the flags turned on so imagine that that this is this is some 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 like completely new uh, like something related to the completely new table right so so like if you use the feature flags uh, or maybe let's start if you don't use the use the, the feature flags you would need to first deploy the uh, creation of this of the schema uh that migration and then in another deployment uh, release the code for it or if you use the feature flags you could start with the feature turn off while deployment create the uh, the table like me like like um, run that 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 migration uh, schema uh and after it's done like after some time just just turn it, turn the feature on. Um, so yeah, so 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 this is the, 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 this is this is what, like like how how the feature flags could help. Um, obviously, Lee, you could you could have some some cases like uh, there is yeah a bit more more complicated scenarios where uh, where you where, where you swap to new new field type um, um, then. How to make it backward backward compatible? If you turn turn on the, the the switch, maybe some of the data will be will appear in the in the one field in the one column, and uh, if you turn off the feature, it will appear in a in a different uh, field. So so here as well, you need to write kind of um, uh, like like uh, a port adapter uh, 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 a pattern maybe uh, to uh, to make that like your API is reading sometimes from one field sometimes from 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 another field so you you don't really lose lose that data uh, or you don't make it you know um make unexpected behavior on the user All right okay thank you and another question about feature flux uh what's the best strategy for cleaning up feature flux 
So uh, yeah, this is that's true. This that this is very often mess, especially if if you don't have process for creating the feature flags and the developers do it do it on your own. Uh, the one thing that that work work from 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 the team where, where I'm working uh, now is something that we uh, we have a script that manage the uh, manage the feature flags. Uh, so we force like people to write down what uh, what is the name of the feature uh, feature flag, what is the description the description what what it actually do, do does, and. Uh, this script also not not only like create uh, because like like we keep the feature flags in the database uh, for like uh, uh, for for doing that from from the from the admin panel, um, so uh, the script like and ensures that things that are written on that script uh, on that say the dictionary whatever uh, remains the same. So it 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 would removes you it removes for you and like like some old feature flags. Or uh, creates the new one, creates ones that 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 came with the new deployment. Nice, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you just for everyone purpose if if you're interested, the way how we deal with uh, feature flags in our code is that. Uh, well, on a code bell, we don't store them in the database. So we basically put a to-do comment next to the uh, use of the feature flag with a date uh, of the uh, release when we when this feature flag is, is expected to be removed and become a permanent part of the code base. Basically, and when the build runs, people get notifications and a list of things which are actually to be need to be removed. So that's... Thanks for that. So quite quite related to, to, to this is, is I think it's like like the like like in general like pr practicing of uh, of like deprecating uh, some 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 pieces of the code. So it's like really I think it's it's worth to uh, to uh, write it in a way that 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 that, that at, at the end of the release you have you have a, you have a list that your users are notified about what what will uh, disappear soon or or what 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 kind of uh, migration they need to change to. To be up to date with with your future releases. So I think that was it. Uh, we have one more minute. If anybody has any other quick question, otherwise, uh, I guess we're done. Uh, thank, thank you very much for lot. your talk. It was nice listening to you, and uh, have a great day. Thank, thanks a lot. Have a great uh, day of the conference and the rest of the week. See you. See you.